You're listening to Midweek Voices. Now, for this part of the programme, I want to talk about activities that are taking place in the Cahor area of County Wexford. Uh, last weekend, a number of local enthusiasts went in search of era signs, which date from the Second World War. And they went along with their shovels and their spades and a little bit of local knowledge. And lo and behold, they made some discoveries. Michael Fortune, our folklorist, who often appears on this programme, uh, Michael was leading the posse. And uh, I've caught up with him here now to see how things are going. Michael, first of all, what were you after? What were you looking for? We were in search of number 11. Um, we went. We went with the easy search. Um, there were about eighty-two or three of these uh, lookout posts positioned around Ireland in the Second World War, and these uh, they each had a corresponding number. So some of the lookout posts still survive in County Wexford. So they, they had big, large lettering with "Era" written on them to alert the Allied pilots going over, and they also had a corresponding number. So Cahor was number eleven, uh, Kilmichael was number ten, and it worked its way. Ballyconnagher was number twelve, and tipped tipped down the coast that way and all around the coast of Ireland. I got a man called Ozzy Kelly who worked for the Air Corps sent me an aerial shot of Cahor from the 40s, mm. from the Second World War and you can clearly see the era and you can see the 11 just down below, below Cahor House or Clark, Cahor Castle just on the side of the cliff. So I came back and we were away at the time and I came back and we said we'd go for a look for it with little one and sure I went up on top of the bank and I was looking in late August and couldn't see anything and sure the winter just passed by then and a friend of mine, an archaeologist here from, from Bally Kearney, uh, Barry Lacey, he said he sent me a text saying, uh, listen, will we go have a gawk at this on Saturday? Because we, we've been working during the week, so I said we'll go some Saturday morning. That was last week, so we put up a post on, on, on social media, on Facebook, to say uh, anyone want, want to join us, give us an hour. And uh, sure, Saturday morning turned out to be the, <laughs> the most miserable morning you could ever get. Um, but we said, listen, we're going to fire ahead because there was only a chance to do it. So we had about 10, 15 people turned up, armed with whatever we could get at all that would... You could stick it to the ground, it would make the sound of it, you'd hope, hopefully hit a stone. I I, I took a gamble, I, I I knew from the maps, I used to fish fish near there as, as a child down in the rocks, I grew up in Ballygart, only a couple of miles away, so I knew the place fairly well. That night before I went out, I said, right, I'm going to put my cards on the table here and I'm going to put down where this number 11, I think this number 11 is, based on the Google current Google Maps. And sure, I went looking, we went looking first uh, in, in one spot, in a, in a kind of a swampy spot, and it wasn't there, and we moved a couple of feet over, and uh, there was a man called Ozzy Kelly, and there was a, there was a, there was a man from Powell a Polish man uh, living in Powell called Maciek uh, Newman Kukensky, and he uh, went down, gave one prod, bang, stones, and sure, we all scrambled down, and... Uh, Sure, it was like a, like a field day. We were deli- absolutely delighted. Everyone was, everyone was over the moon. And it was around around 11 o'clock on the 11th of, 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 of January. Um, we found number 11. And sure, sure, it was just pure pure excitement. It was, it was miserable. But And even the minute we even pulled back to pulled back to Sod Street, you could see the you could see some of the, the whitewash still there on them. So it was, it was brilliant. And what was brilliant for me, I knew it was there, I'll be honest with you. But people said to me, oh, that was gone, that was ploughed up. And I can't say that I can't because it would have been, a, you can see from the, the photograph, it was on, it's on the side of a cliff. It's yeah. on the side of a cliff to make it easy for the, for the pilots to see. So we're absolutely delighted. And just over a couple of, couple of yards further over north again is the, the era sign. And the era sign is there now. It's in. It's on a steep bank now. And it's been a good bit of a, there's a, a lot of the bank is kind of, the clay has moved and shifted but it's still there it'll take a little bit a little bit more work to, to get it get the outline right uh, but it's it's all achievable you know it's all achievable so basically it was put there in the 1940s to yeah. alert the pilots coming in planes were coming in at that particular stage when the war was over then people forgot about it and just uh, nature and vegetation everything grew over it and people forgot about it was that the way it was yeah absolutely and what's surprising is history can disappear like we, we think back like people like yourself myself you'd be inter- in, interested in history 70 years is nothing you know but for you know a couple of a couple a, a couple of years and the vegetation it'll be completely gone but it was completely what surprised us was what surprised us was very few people knew about it. My grandmother worked in the castle, in the Cahora House, um, uh, during, probably during the 40s, 50s. And sure, I never once heard her mention it, you know. And the lookout post was there. The lookout post was there. I documented that back over the years. There was the lookout post. But that, that uh, got, got fell down. I got knocked down only, only maybe back in, in, in the early noughties. Uh, but it's all still there. It's, all easy, it's easy to put back up again. But we knew that was there. But we didn't know this air was there. We didn't know this 11 was there. And it's the same all around. It's, it's same all around the coast then even up in Kilmichael and uh, it's there in Kilmichael still we're going to try to get a crowd of us together and go up to Kilmichael and do the same um, the Ballyconnigar one is gone um, we're fairly definite because there was coast it actually was coastal erosion and the field where it was it's gone um, but down along tipping down along the coast down to uh, Greenore and Carnsorn and Forlorn and the Hook 
I'm, I'm not sure about green or a so or forlorn. I'm not sure. Green or a or there may be a possibility there. I'm not. I'm not sure. I'd have to look into it. So their biggest enemy would have been coastal erosion, and uh, in the case of Cahor, uh, it survived. It was yeah. high enough yeah. and, and and protected enough on the on the point. Yeah, it was. The rocks, the, the rocks protected it. But I think there's other ones that might there might be there. The one in the hook, we have an aerial shot of the one in the hook. And again, what happened? I suppose the community, if you've got a, a nice field and you want to plow it or put cattle on it, and these big stones are in your way, they're moved, you know. But um, I, again, I. I, I'm, I'm, no, I'm, I'm no expert on it but uh, but I, it's worth prodding around and looking around maybe in, in those other areas Kilmichael is definitely we're fairly confident about Kilma- it being there in Kilmichael and what's really interesting if you look at the map like there's a map of the, all the different lookout posts you, uh, you have the map in front of us here and your uh, your little lookout points they're all around Ireland they're all around Ireland they start up in Loud and they come down one, two, three, four, and we're number well obviously Wexford the first one in Wexford is number 10 it ends at 16 then down in down in the Hook and carries on up to Inishon up in Donegal and if you look at the lookout post and, and, and this particular map Dan, you'll see that the air signs most of them survived on the west coast and there was very few survived along the, the south or sorry the east coast and the south coast maybe due to farming probably as well you wouldn't know or maybe a bit, bit of coastal erosion I'm not the, sure the coastal erosion I think yeah. is more severe in the Southeast and, yeah. and, and uh, yeah. now, um, of course, that time the planes coming in, uh, they would depend on, on on vision, what the pilot could see, and also they wouldn't be flying at a, a terribly big heights, probably a couple of hundred feet, not compared with planes now that can yeah. be miles up in the sky. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the things which which I only got my hands on at the weekend was actually the log books from these lookout posts. I have the I, I've been going through the log book for Cahor for a, for a, it's a year log book. And sure, what they were spotting, they were spotting light aircraft, exactly, exactly what you were saying. They were spotting colliers going up and down. Some of the colliers were being called up, they were armed. They were even spotting, you know, at, there was mines, there was the count. So every every couple of hours they wrote an account of what they saw and what they didn't see. I'd say they saw very little now, to be fair. But they, they, but even, even the, the picture that they, to be able to go back to the 1940s to see it, to read about a steam trawler or to read about the, the light ship, the, the steam light ship that was going up on the, from the Blackwater Bank. Like these are incredible little pieces of local history. And even record there was one account of a we grew up uh, there's a story at home saying there was a dog fight off Cahor now sure you'd, you'd hear these stories but you wouldn't know whether there'd be any truth in them or not but the boys have an account of um, a planes skirmish between two planes and bursts of fire one after the other so there was your your dog fight or your, 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 your incident there was also evidence of incidents of course during the second world war and Camp Pyle I suppose the bombing of Camp Pyle is the famous one uh, Knock Row where the, the, the family were, were wiped out um, Mount Leinster the, the black, black, black water, yeah. Cairn. Yeah. Um, I was dealing with a man down in Waterford and he had a number of uh, incidents down there as well. And um, some of the planes crashed and some of them uh, landed successfully. So there was a fair deal of air activity uh, over the southeast uh, during the World War years. And would they be generally planes that had come in over England, bombed Coventry and the different cities, and then would sweep around on the return journey? I think that was the, the thinking behind it. Yeah, that's the kind of thinking behind the, the Shannons here, Knock Row, just up here in, in Mount Leinster. It was a New Year's Eve night, I think, forty forty one. That that family were, uh, there were a, a series of bombs dropped in their home and killed, killed I think, two of the girls. I think that everyone said that was just by 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 accident. The the, the Germans were just dropping their bombs on the way to to, to, to lose weight on the way back, um, or maybe a, a misguided a misguided uh, target. But yeah, the war. But even even like planes, then like down near where I grew up near Ballygarrett, there was a hurricane crash near Kilmacridge. There was a Spitfire crash near Wells House. There was an American plane crashed up near Killeena. That's only within a maybe five, ten mile radius, small radius, and I'm sure that's repeated in other parts of the county as well. Where like Wexford were so close to Wales, you know, it would have been a natural a natural spot, you know, and you can see why then the, the, why the Americans wanted I think it was the Americans who wanted these lookout posts and these numbers because they were losing um they were losing planes or getting lost coming over. Um so they wanted to be as basically be able to see exactly where they were when they were coming over Ireland. And and there's another factor there as well because they didn't appear until the nineteen forties mm-hmm. and we were neutral. Mm-hmm. Now on your map they don't appear around the coast of the six counties, uh which is part of British airspace. So they were perhaps put there to protect our neutrality. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, because in, incidents, they seem to appear in 42, 43. That's what I'm reading. So that's quite late, you know. Um, and I think it was 41 when, the, it was in May 41 when the incident took place in in, in Dublin. There was a, the bomb in Dublin. Um, so yeah, maybe there was, there, was, there was a reason we, we put them there ourselves as well for our own protection. 
And you can imagine there that there were cities actually in Cardiff and, and, and um, Swansea in, in Wales. Liverpool got hit particularly sh- uh, sharp and uh, Coventry and, and Birmingham. And if you think about Liverpool, if you're dropping bombs in a big city in the UK, you need to get out over the ocean and get back as quick as you can. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and one of the things which I, 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 I was always trying to get my head around it, was even up here in Ballandagan, Alien, the other half's her father, said his mother always said that the windows, when during the war, that the windows would rattle, he said. He said that the, 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 people, the people said that no, that was going to get a, there was a big bombing in England or Wales. And I've heard that same story repeated from different older people around Wexford. And it's interesting, I always said to myself, would you, would you have had, would you have felt the, you know, the, 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 the explosions, whatever. But going through the lookout post, their accounts, back to March 41, at uh, the time when Cardiff and all were getting bombed, there were raids. There were accounts of hearing explosions off in the distance. Now I, I'm only looking at the Cahor one. Now maybe they, they could have been attacking a U-boat out in the Irish Sea. I don't know, but these were recorded and were recorded numerous times. Well, I remember my grandmother talking about hearing the bombs in Camp Pyle. That sounds a bit strange, but she also said they heard the bombs in Ballymorn. Now, that would be easy because where we lived to Ballymorn, I'd say, is less than three miles as the crow flies. Mm-hmm. Now, if you think back in those days, there was very little aircraft. It would be, the, the, there would be stillness out there. Yeah. So if you had any sort of crack or bang, it would carry for miles and also people wouldn't be used to uh, air activity. So they, they, it would make an impression. Yeah, and these lads' accounts, one of the accounts, he says, heard continuous explosions from, from the sea, from over the sea. So they were obviously, they were hearing, they were hearing something, again, whether it was attacking a U-boat, but, you know, I, I, we just need to line up dates, and it would be lovely, I'm going to try to get my hands on the, the Ballyconnigar accounts, and maybe the ones down around, uh, uh, the, 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 around Ross Lair, to figure out were they hearing the same things, you know, but, uh, but it, w- it wouldn't surprise me, you know, we're not that far across. We're not, and uh, the Coast Guard system, of course, was in operation down along the coast for a lo- long number of years before that, and also there's uh, records of protection around Ross Lair Harbour, and of course the ships, the ferries going in and out of Ross Lair, I think the St. Patrick was the famous one, several of those were attacked at sea and there was a loss of life. It was a pretty hot part of, of, of the world um, during the war years, even though we were neutral. Yeah, and it, 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 I'd, I'd, I'd love to compare, say, for example, the Wexford ones compared to the ones in Donegal, the logbooks, or the ones from Galway, for example, whatever, because as you said, that channel, you know, there was numerous accounts of colliers going up and down, up and down the coast, constant. That was that's, that's what they were spotting the whole time. So they were probably bringing coal up from from Cornwall or South Wales, up to Liverpool or up to Scotland somewhere. So yeah, so that that corridor, we were the corridor in which 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 things uh, where where there was activity and it was noted as well. Now I remember a short time ago, of course, there was a gorse fire in uh, Bray Head, which did a lot of damage. And one of the things that it did was uncovered one of those era signs, yeah. and it got a lot of publicity. Yeah. People got interested in it. That's where I revived my interest in it. Yeah. This is one of the things that I'd say inspired you because people then start pulling out these aerial maps with with the numbers on them. Yeah, I know. I, I, we'd we'd lived in Limerick for years, and I spotted the ones in Donegal and Sli- I think it was in Sli- um, Donegal and Sligo, I think, years ago. But you're dead right. When that fire came, that just I suppose it set a spark. There's a there's a, a chap or a person up in up in up in Antrim called Connor Corbett, and he put he's pulled together this a, a project called Airspace, and he's been documenting for the last couple of years. Now I don't know whether Connor was doing it beforehand or not, but he's doing Trojan work at documenting all these different things. Um, a really good guy. There was also there was another project called the Lookout Post project a couple of years ago as well. That was done with the um, I don't know it was done with a couple of government agencies. I think it was a German artist or filmmaker. So you know they, they have been on the radar. I documented it, well it was sort because of, I grew up beside it. I photographed the one in Cahor back in 98, 99, whatever, because I. I'd have an interest in them. The one in Cahors is interesting as well because a man was telling me that his father, um, we heard it, but he'd only heard it as kind of a rumour, but he said, oh, my father lived in that, he says. So he said his father lived in that particular one maybe when he, when he moved over to Ireland years ago, moved over from England, spent a bit of time in it. It was it'd be as good as any tent. Uh, but I'd, I'd love to I'd love to see it. I Personally, I'd love to see it back put back together again and like they were like Ikea uh, units like uh, Ozzy was telling me like yeah, you sent me, showed me some drawings the blocks were all labelled you know so you just basically they were just 
constructed. He said it came on the back, the back of a flat flatbed lorry. So they're very easy to put up. And especially now because they've got this new coastal walk, a part of the coastal route in Wexford, running along the cliff. So it'll be a fantastic spot if we can just kind of manage it and maintain it and keep it right. It'll be brilliant. A living piece of history that we can use, you know. And and Cahor now as a pier and as a, a landing point for um, vessels with their coal and uh, different... Uh, commodities that they brought into the country Cahor would have been more important than Court Town. Court Town was developed a little bit later I think. So Cahor was out of the traps really early and that's why it was a very significant point. Yeah and there were even rumours, I've heard rumours, I think just down south of the county as well, there were rumours that when they were planning the Ross Lair or, or uh, Cahor was in, in, in with the running you know, for, but it wasn't a deep enough harbour so um, it was a Baligiri or Ross Lair Harbour, that's where, the, that's where the, 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 the pier went. But yeah it's been there, like it's, it's, it's a direct beeline and if you even consider like Ferns as a the ancient Gaelic capital of Ireland, like that stra- that part of the coastline from Cahor up to Glass Carrick to Ardamine, you know, that was the entry and exit point in in across straight across to Wales. You know, that's we, we were told Mike Murray left from just north of Cahor to go over to Wales to bring the Normans in. You know. And, and sure didn't St. Patrick sort of come in and out at last carry. <laughs> he did, yeah. Poor old Patrick. Yeah, Patrick. <laughs> years before. <laughs> yeah, years. Yeah. But 1,500 years ago, there's a great story down poor old Patrick. He landed up near uh, Castletown and the locals, uh, Ian and Kinsley was a local chieftain up there and the, the locals didn't like him and they threw stones at him and Sir Patrick uh, flaked off anyway and went up to the River Boyne and kept, settled there instead. But yeah, but they're still sore over it now. They're all, they're always, well, he'd obviously remind him every now and again to you threw stones at Patrick. <laughs> <laughs> And, and Michael Fortune now, you, you got the lads together and you went off in the rain yeah. on Saturday morning yeah. and you've discovered now where all of this is. Yeah. And um, is it your plan now maybe to uncover the area sign and have it there for anybody who wants to go along and see it as a, as a, as a, a local tourist attraction? Yeah, I suppose it would be. Like we have no long game plan. That's the interesting thing here. There's a bunch of people from archaeologists, Byron Jones, Owen Dunbar. There's two local brothers, Miles and John Redmond, and there's just people. There was a couple of Dublin men there, and Dublin couple we didn't know. Like it was just. I suppose the the, the, the hard work now was done. You know, trying to finding it and getting it there. And uh, we need to figure out and kind of regroup and figure out what we're going to do. But I'd say there's enough people locally that will want to see this back and get get it right. One of the real things which gets me about Cahor, which is lovely, is the fact that. Well, the Ballygard lads were lucky, whatever. They got two ones, so it just made our life easy to make two big, two lengths of stone, right? Didn't get 18 or 78 or anything like that. Um, but the air sign, if you look at the aerial photograph, you can see the big one in painted in the big stone, painted in white, whitewash. But over near the big, e, the big E, you can t- see a small area. And they meant, what happened was they made a small one first, but it looks of it, and someone must have come down and said, lads, that's not big enough. We really need to make it a bit bigger. So the oak, they made it bigger now, so it's proper big. So it's almost like getting, I always think it's like getting a, you know, something's worth more money, like when you get a note that's got a, a slight imperfection or something, a little peculiar thing. So that's what's lovely about the Cahor one. If we can get it right and maybe even get the, the small air. But it's not, it's going to be big, it'll be a big enough job, a big push on the community, but it, hopefully we'll, we'll get there. But really, it, it's a maritime historian's haven, really, isn't it? Because you've got this air assigned. Now that's all new and that's the aircraft coming in. You've also got um, all of those people who were washed up from sea, bodies from the Pomona, the famous Pomona wreckage. Yeah. And they're all buried in the little graveyards and little corners, you know, right along the coast from Kilmichael right down to Ross Lair and yeah, yeah. All, all, all any any of our coastal communities in Wexford will know we have these things called these places called sailors' holes. We had a German airman washed up called Franz Gunter. Um, he was shot down. He was a pilot. He was shot down. I think it's forty one October forty one. He's up in Glencree now. We have a, we have a photograph of his grave. Actually, Father Ransom from in his Gordy Castle fame and songs of the Wexford coast. He documented the he photographed the grave. Um, I only recorded a woman. I recorded her in two thousand eighteen. A woman called Bet Young or Bet Ryan. She lived in England for most of her life. But she told me this brilliant story. I heard about her back in 2015 first of two young German airmen. Uh, their plane went down. I'd say the rest of their crew were, were killed. And they came ab- aboard a little dinghy and they arrived at Balnamona. And Father Ned Wheeler, Red Wheeler, uh, was a footballer, played football for Wexford. Um, him and another local man went out and sure the Ned brought him home and put him up in the bed for the night and fed him and looked after him and dried their clothes and you know they were delighted to be to be alive, and which caused a bit of a story. But this woman remembers seeing she was in school in the, in the vocational school in Kilmockridge. She remembers seeing the the, the, the army from the Corrie or was from Corrie I assume come down and take the two young lads off. So it's it's alive. Like when you hear a ninety six year old woman telling you this, like and she's she's as clear as as day, you know, telling you how. And there's also records of of people coming back, and saying there were pilots. 
or they landed somewhere near Morris Castle or Cahor or Kilmuckery, that part of the country. Yeah. And that's on record as well, up yeah. in the Macamore country. Yeah. And they've been, some of them were English, some of them were, were from maybe European countries. And, and they remember their war years when they, they came in over Ireland and possibly landed. Yeah. Obviously they were saved, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, it, it's, it's, it's a very important feature of World War Two, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely, and I, I, I don't think other counties would have as m- many of those incidents as we would have, you know. And they still survive. Like there was a Polish pilot crash a Spitfire up near up near uh, Wells House, and I was only reading. I think it could be a relation of mine helped pull them out. Jan Z- uh, Jan Zimak, I think was was, was his name. Peter uh, Peter Peter, I think it was Peter Mayhew or Paul Mayhew, another pilot. He crashed a hurricane, and he wrote a diary. He landed in Walsh's farm near the island between Kilmuckridge Say and Owlert, and he wrote a diary of landing in, th- in this field and the woman feeding him bread and eggs and. And bringing them on to an Escorty Garda station up to the Corridan, you know. So uh, they're, 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 they're important parts. Well, maybe some of the people who wanted to remember the RIC might remember the way we had to protect ourselves in times past and particularly times of war when we weren't involved. And we have all this debate in the light of Brexit about security in the South East and all the rest of it. So maybe there, there, there's something there in the history. But anyway, you've enjoyed your expedition. It's been very worthwhile and yeah. very revealing. And um, you've got publicity all over the place. And uh, you find there's a curiosity. A lot of, apart from the 10 of you that went out yeah. in the dreadful conditions, there is a curiosity amongst people. They love this sort of thing. Yeah, there is, and it was to me was what was was lovely. We had people that we never met before. I said this this man living in Powell Chowan, this Polish man uh, lives in Powell Chowan with his family. Him to turn up, whatever, and Aussie come down from Dublin. One of the chaps. There is. It was just great. There was great excitement as well. And uh, you know, we were saying to ourselves, we were looking at Barry and Byron, who are two professional archaeologists. We were going, are we doing the right thing here, no lads? But sure, we were lifting saws left, right, and centre. But we we don't. We, we just the, the the excitement drove us. But like, I suppose the hard the, the hard work is done. But the hard work is done. But I'd love to. I'd love to have a crack at Kill Michael, and I'm, I'd encourage people. Down further down along the coast as well, like to um, maybe have a, have a look, you know. Don't rule it out yet. Well, it goes just goes to show you, we did have amazing times here in our little southeastern corner, and things did happen. Yeah. We've forgotten about them, but maybe when we look back on them, uh, you know, life wasn't as dull as as, as it was painted. Yeah. Look at Michael Fortune. It's always a pleasure to talk to you. You're always doing something interesting. I love this one, the Cahor one. I'm really interested in it yeah. and you have the photographs and everything there and it, it's a wonderful project and uh, you know good luck with it and hopefully people in the other parts of the country now will start going looking for their signs and yeah. you know it, it's, a, it's a nice thing to come back yeah absolutely absolutely it's just little small things in life that uh, keep us going and pull people together and, and you know create a bit of pride in who we are and where we're from um, and that's just one of them